The video you are about to see documents the problem of coastal erosion in Hawaii. Though the shoreline of Kihei Maui was used as an example, the problems of beach erosion are common throughout the Hawaiian Islands. At one time, it was thought that sea walls and sea level rise were causing Hawaii's beach erosion. But since sea level rise is the same on any part of an island, it didn't explain why one beach would grow while another would erode, often in adjacent areas. More recently, researchers discovered other sources of beach erosion, man-made factors such as reef destruction, nutrient pollution, and dune gaps cut to prevent flooding of lowland areas. But the general public, local media, and some government officials are not aware of these new findings, so prohibitions on seawalls persist while the erosion-causing activities continue unchecked. This video highlights some of the research done by one group of shoreline homeowners on Halama Street where beach erosion runs rampant from still legal man-made erosion causing activities. In February 1997, the front page of the Maui News carried a story about severe land erosion taking place along Halama Street in Kihei, Maui. At the time, the government refused to let the affected property owners build seawalls to stop the loss of land. The government's thinking was and is that seawalls created the erosion. In light of the severity of the problem on Halama Street, affected homeowners were allowed to install temporary structures made of sea bags filled with sand. While solving the immediate erosion problem, long-term solutions remain mired in controversy over the true cause of erosion, and in turn, the true solution. Research spearheaded by Bob Colopy, president of the Halama Street Homeowners Association, challenges the conclusion that seawalls created the erosion. During World War II, the Navy underwater demolition team was stationed at Kalama Park and so here they've erected a memorial to commemorate the brave actions of the military men who went into the Pacific and landed on beach islands similar to ours and blew up the reef in order to get their crafts on the beach. They returned with explosives to demolish obstacles on the beaches and underwater such as coral reefs and tetrahedrons which could impede landing craft in targeted and decoy areas. Now, we are grateful for our Team 14 and the major contribution they made to winning the war. But we did not understand at that time when they were blowing up the reefs what the long-term consequences of destroying the fringing coral reefs out here. And this is what caused the beach erosion at Kalama Park, which then led to the seawall, which then transferred the erosion down to Halama Street. And we're struggling with this problem more than 50 years later. We had a reef out in front where the kids could go out and walk along the reef on low tide and find little eels and fish and shells and things. And then little by little it started eroding. We decided to put in a seawall on our property. So we had the trench dug and then we covered it up and we thought we'd never see it again. We had about 70 feet out in front still, state land out in front. And then over the years the, the, the ocean started the erosion started coming down closer and closer, and eventually uh, it came to the seawall. Here we are at Kalama Park, and the real name is Kalama Beach Park, but it is no longer a beach park. In fact, it looks like any other park anywhere that could be inland. About 1943, the Navy underwater demolition team was stationed here. This is where they did their training exercises for beach landings in the Pacific during World War II. They would have to blow up the reef, and in the process of blowing up the reef, create a path that their boats could get into the land, into the shoreline, for war purposes. Maui County, at the end of the war, requested the Navy to blow up the rest of the reef, and this was primarily to make this fringing reef park have less coral. And as they blew up cuts through the reef, that provided rip currents that took the sand out and the beach started to erode. My parents owned the property that I'm on now and uh, there was um, no problem at that time, though very shortly some erosion started because the Navy had 
blasted out a corridor in the reef. The problem of land erosion is being experienced worldwide. Globally, the sea level is gradually rising. In addition, the Hawaiian Islands are slowly sinking. However, in many areas, the impact on beach erosion is reduced by protective fringing coral reefs. A healthy reef rises faster than the sea level or the sinking land, causing a coastal wetland just inland of the beach dunes. There are wetlands located along Halama Street. Rainwater and other water runoff get trapped in these low spots and can't easily drain into the ocean. Maui County has cut gaps in the dunes to prevent flooding of low land development. Unfortunately, these gaps create openings that allow the wind to blow the sand inland. The water in this wetland area is being kept from flowing to the ocean by the wind blowing sand dunes in front of it. We then send in trucks and cut open these dunes. This then allows the wind to blow the sand inland and fill in this entire wetland area. And right here we have almost 5,000 cubic yards of sand that are blown inland through an opening in the dune system cut to allow water to drain from this wetland out into the ocean. The diverted sand fills in the wetlands rather than staying on the beach. This increases the problem of beach erosion. With the loss of sand, the beaches shrink inland away from the fringing reefs. A pocket with poor water circulation is created, becoming a dumping area for the runoff water. This water is rich in fertilizer and soil enriching nutrients. When it enters the ocean, it stagnates near the shore, encouraging algae bloom and further loss of sand. I windsurf in front of uh, Maui Sunset at uh, Waiapulani Street, and uh, the seaweed uh, frequently accumulates there to a depth of one to two feet and uh, decomposes and makes quite an odor. Uh, my thrust right now is to get together on a uniform uh, front to uh, try to approach uh, uh, extracting the seaweed short term from the water and then long term all alleviating the uh, problems that cause the seaweed to uh, grow in the first place. The high nutrient load results in seaweed blooms which rot on the beach chemically dissolving the sand into a stinking black muck. We're at the Maui Sunset and the rotting seaweed has become such a problem that every day a tractor has to come in and remove it from the beach system. This beach has become totally unusable and to the residents who live here, it stinks. The decomposing seaweed releases deadly hydrogen sulfide gas which smells like an open sewer. The decaying, smelly sand mixture useful to farmers is hauled away by the county and others. Hundreds of cubic yards of sand are taken from the beach and trucked to landfills and farms. This also contributes to beach erosion. Ironically, seawalls get blamed for the loss of sand and not the drainage of wetlands. The Halama Street Homeowners Association has been investigating methods of stopping these active causes of erosion. Their goal is to allow the beach and reef to begin healing. Their active website has drawn comments and information from around the world. The result is an understanding of the cause of erosion, additional consequences of the erosion, and a plan to create a long-term solution. These findings, unfortunately, are not in line with the views held by influential advisors to the state regarding the matter of land erosion. At a public meeting held in November 1998, Rob Mullane, who is advising the government on how to deal with the erosion problem, touched upon the approach supported by Professor Chip Fletcher from the University of Hawaii. Professor Fletcher advocates beach retreat, which threatens loss of land, rather than identifying and stopping the causes of erosion. We, we cannot have beach restoration be a panacea. This is something I've said before. Um, we don't have uh, adequate supplies of sand yet. Uh, we, there are some environmental considerations that, that need to be looked at. So. Our, our goal as, as the Maui Planning Commission, I, I think, should be to prevent the need for beach restoration by having adequate setbacks, and which are not even addressed in these rules. That's something we're going to have to tackle later. In these rules, they primarily penalize the seawall builders and do not take into consideration that we are the victims of erosion caused by other factors that occurred before the seawalls went up. The Halama Street Homeowners Association is spearheading an effort to make beach restoration 
a top priority. The time to act is now. The goal is stop diverting the sand from the beach. Stop detrimental removal of coral rubble. Help the beach restore itself. Help create public and private support to restore the coral reef structures. Hire coastal engineers to diagnose and solve beach erosion problems in Hawaii. Success is achievable only if state officials, residents, and homeowners can focus on working to reach a common goal. Nature works where everything works together, and when you take out one thing, then the other thing starts to fall apart. You can't you know, cut off your finger and, and work for the best. So yes, this is very good, and, and I applaud your efforts. I hope we all move forward just in this, in this way. For further information, the association can be reached at Halama Street Homeowners Association, PO Box 1211, Pu'unene, Hawaii, 96784. Or we can also be reached at our website. A restored beach will benefit the entire community. Please join us in the effort to petition public officials who can facilitate the implementation of these changes. The ability to make a difference is within our grasp. The time to act is now.